Good morning and welcome to your the Meet Your Future campaign. My name is Jane and I am part of the education, work and skills team at the Greater Manchester Combined Authority. I am also joined this morning by my colleague Hazel, who is behind the scenes as my co-host. For those that have joined us before, you will be aware that Meet Your Future was launched in April 2019 by Andy Burnham, the Mayor of Greater Manchester, to enable more young people like you to meet with and connect with different employers across Greater Manchester to learn about different roles and careers. This week, National Apprenticeship Week, our theme is Growth in Greater Manchester. What does that mean? Well, throughout this week in our Meet Your Future sessions, we will be exploring the industries, roles and careers that are fast growing across Greater Manchester and what opportunities that offers you, the future workforce. We will be able to learn about what an apprenticeship is, and how apprenticeships might be the option for you after you leave school or college to develop the skills and knowledge for your future. In this session today, we'll be hearing from Chi Chi and Emily from Siemens. Hopefully this session will inform you, inspire you and highlight that you can be hopeful and optimistic about your future career in Greater Manchester. Please make use of the question box for any questions or thoughts you have throughout the session. You'll be able to see this on the right hand side of your screen and my co-host will be publishing any questions that come through. Please ask your teacher to put any questions you might have in the question box. Don't be shy. There is no such thing as a silly question and we'll cover these with both our presenters at the end. If you'd like to use captions or subtitles during the session, please select the caption subtitles on in your video control panel. Um, so firstly, Chi Chi, can I hand over to you to introduce yourself? Yes, um, my name is Chi Chi. I'm currently um, an apprentice at Siemens, so I'm doing an apprenticeship called Electrical um, Applications and it works very much with electrical designs and creating designs and I'm about a year and a half into my apprenticeship now. Wonderful and then just before we get started Emily are you able to introduce yourself as well? Hi my name's Emily I'm doing the exact same apprenticeship as Chi Chi we've been working together for a, a year and a half as well. Wonderful over to you guys. Okay. Um, our apprenticeship experience. <laughs> so for me, I was introduced to all the different types of engineering for um, through Hargreaves Engineering Young Talent Programme back in 2016. So um, that's when I was in year eight. Um, it was very much centred around um, engineering and um, the practical side of it. Um, but what we had to do was um, go through health and safety presentations in small groups. And I guess that kind of um, showed me the different kinds of roles within the engineering sector. So whilst I did enjoy the programme um, that I did in high school, it did show me that I enjoyed engineering or the idea of it, but not civil engineering particularly. Um, so what really pointed out electrical engineering for me was my physics course. Um, I really did enjoy the electrical theory that I did in it and that kind of pointed my focus towards electrical engineering. So if, when it came to the job roles within that sector, there's a wide range again. So um, shadowing other engineers in that field helped me to see what kind of jobs were offered and what kind of skills were needed for those jobs. When I did that, it showed to me that engineering design seemed to be what interested me the most, but also what suited to my strengths. Um, so because of that, I, I picked electrical engineering and aimed for engineering design as a career. Um, so for me, I personally took the A-level route. So I took A-level physics, A-level maths and space engineering. And the way I chose those was by looking at what kind of qualifications were needed for an engineering apprenticeship. Um, I think once I did that, it made it easier to, when there's such a large choice when it comes to A-levels. Um, and they did teach me some useful skills that I still use in my apprenticeship today. So things like problem 
problem solving, independent research and time management, which is very project, important when it comes to projects, sorry. <laughs> um, and the reason why I applied to Siemens was because it was a name that I recognised. I saw it a lot day to day in hospitals, you see it in the, uh, on machines and in kitchens as well. So for me, it seemed like a company that I'd like to work for. So um, now moving on to my journey. Um, in high school, my favourite subjects were maths and art, and I always do love doing arts and crafts in my extracurricular activities. Um, I did have a group that I went to every Saturday where we used to knit and prepare patchwork and stuff along those lines. When I got older, I did um, get bigger interests in stuff like this. So I was more interested in like flat pack furniture. I did build a shed with my dad once. Um, and this kind of skill was very helpful during lockdown because everyone then needed um, home stuff like desks and cupboards building for them. Um, then my next step from high school was to decide whether I wanted to do an A-level or a B-tech. The A-level step was the popular choice with everyone else and the B-tech step was more independent and I decided to go with the more independent even though they were both such good choices. Um, in my college um, I did the mechanical engineering BTEC rather than the electrical because I wanted to be more hands on. My favourite subjects was CAD, which I think that is when I first fell in love with um, engineering design. I also enjoyed health and safety, which prepares you for the rest of health and safety in the field. It's in any part of engineering, like electrical or any type. Um, I also love fabrication because that was the mechanical part and I did enjoy using all the machines that we were allowed to. Um, engineering maths was also fun because it was challenging and it was also in the subject that I wanted to do. Um, my college experience. During the first year of college, we were required to do some work experience and I got assigned to a car manufacturer near my house, which helped me gain a lot of experience in mechanical working. Um, I developed my skills in how to remove old brake disc pads and um, off cars and replace them with new ones. But then unfortunately, COVID hit shortly after and then we were told to not go anymore. Then I had to decide whether I wanted to do a HNC or apprenticeship. So after I completed my BTEC, everyone else carried on with the HNC. But then I thought that I might do an apprenticeship because my family encouraged me to go towards the apprenticeship route and they um, recommended one for Siemens. And then I realised that it was a design engineering. So I thought that I should go for it. But I was very nervous because I everyone else was doing HNC and I was just jumping into the working world. Um, and then I applied for Siemens and got the job. So it all worked out. <laughs> so a picture paints a thousand words. And if we could describe the first year of our apprenticeship, these are the pictures me and Emily thought we'd choose. Um, for the practical side of things, we've really been able to enjoy um, having the time to really learn theory of our work, so having the space and creative outlet to practice this, as you can see, even on the whiteboard sometimes in, in the office. Um, and then we've also been able to go into the field of our top box, box manufacturers and see what we do, but actually in real life. And it has really helped our whole learning experience. Um, and it feels really good to reflect back at these photos and see what we've actually been able to do. Sometimes you don't realise the progress you've made until um, you look back as well. And then on the personal development side, we in the start of our apprenticeship, we went on a trip to Braithe with fellow apprenticeships and they're all in the same boat as you, just starting out in a big Siemens company. And we all did teamwork activities, which were really fun. And it does bring you out of your shell and you get more confident for when you get ready to actually start working.
Um, so we, as we said, we are electrical apprenticeship, electrical apprentices, um, and we work in medium voltage switch gear. So on a day to day basis, we have projects and we have to collaborate with project managers and tendering engineers, and we have to come up with a lot of engineering solutions. So um, you do need to have the skill of communication, either if it's just talking or through emails. And when it comes to the work that we do, we our whole job is centered around creating engineering designs. So um, this includes from physical layouts of what we're designing, but also the internal makeup as well. So for example, electrical circuits, um, which really defined how, how our products work and how they protect electricity, because um, we design switch gear. So that's what the main function of it is. And we really take a project right from the beginning um, when a customer's ordered it all the way up to build stage um, with the designing process being sandwiched in the middle. Um, so it's quite satisfying to see a project being completed and like you saw in the pictures before, being able to test that it works towards our designs. We do all of this with a lot of help and support from our mentors and the rest of the engineering team. And pretty much everyone at Siemens helps you anyway, but due to specific stuff, these are very helpful people. So the key things to know in a, about an apprenticeship um, that I wish I would have known in the beginning, and that's nice to share, is that an apprenticeship isn't actually about knowing everything already, but it's, instead it's about having a supported and open environment so that we can actually learn the work that you're there to do. And that's the exact kind of environment that me and Emily have been able to enjoy. Um, and also everything does start off new and that's OK. And knowing that something um, is good or that something will come with time really does help with anxiety that you might feel initially and it really does come with time and the people that you work with when it comes to colleagues they don't expect you to come as a ready-made expert so for me and Emily or especially if I think about myself I came in not knowing what switch gear even was and um, I'd obviously taken some engineering courses and still didn't know what switch gear was and yet now I do a job based around it so if your um, anxiety is based on the fact that you don't know what your job entails you really shouldn't worry um so when we were four months into our apprenticeship we both got our first projects and we were both terrified um but after getting into it and starting then we didn't feel as scared because then we knew that our mentors were there with us step by step working us through every single little part and also that um we're going into apprenticeship opens like so many doors for you because just in our little apprenticeship we can go into project management, sales, tendering, finance and that's just in our small section but people from Siemens literally just move from different ends of the company just to get a new job and just to get, learn something new. So these are the um, job roles that we offer. So we're on the electrical and electronic um, type of engineering. But there are a lot more that you can get into. As you can see on the screen, there's lots of choices to pick from. And even within those sectors, like Emily said before, you still have a choice of widening out to a different type of job role. So you're never really set on one path. Instead, just view it as the start of a journey. So yeah, that's how we describe it. Yeah. Anyone has any questions? <laughs> Thank you so much, Emily and Chi Chi. That was so nice to hear. Um, we do run on a slight delay, so we'll give um, viewers a couple of minutes just to put some questions through to you both. And whilst we're waiting for them to come through, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you um, some questions. So I, as well, did an apprentice when I finished school at 16. Um, and something that 
I think is different to the traditional A levels and then on, on into university route is the steep learning curve about working, like going from being someone that is in full time education to somebody who's working full time, where if you are a young person that's travelling through A levels and then off into university, you've got the luxury of, of learning more gradually because you might have part time work, you might be working with friends or family members. Um, how was that adjustment going from full time education and then straight into employment? Um, um, and I'll go to Emily first. I will direct the question. <laughs> sorry. Um, going into full time, I don't know. It just wasn't. I think it was a big change because obviously for my college, I was only in three days a week and then I'm starting at half seven every morning um, to do my work. But we do have um, we do have college one day a week, which kind of breaks up everything as well. But it, you just get used to it. I feel like you just need like the first two, three weeks to get used to your new routine. And also we do get to work from home, but the first few weeks we didn't because obviously we're learning new things. But you do get used to it after a while. Chi Chi, same for you. How was the adjustment from full time education to barring day release, which is the one day that you go into college and um, full time employment? When I was going into college, I did go in every day. So when it came to um, the amount of days I go into the office, I feel like work was better because we do um, some days in the office, some days working from home, especially on a Friday. So that was quite nice. But I think when it came to um, the perspective of when you go to college, you already know everything, what you're going to expect. Um, the fact that you have teachers there uh, you expect not to know much but you can make your way around but for work it's a bit different because you don't know anything since you've um, for me anyway I hadn't been in a working environment before but just like anything that's new you just get used to it so I don't think it was difficult it was just new yeah thank you okay so we have got questions coming in now um so this is from anonymous anonymous has asked um what qualifications will you get at the end of your apprenticeships so chi chi can i ask you first um at the end we'll get a hnc um so a higher national certificate so at the moment we do our one day a week into um a learning a training provider so for us it's a, a it's a college that does this additionally um but we also do have the opportunity to progress and do a HND if we want to or even a degree so that's the good thing with with Siemens they're happy and willing to um, finance your learning even past um, the apprenticeship you choose. Wonderful um, so th there's another question that oh sorry Emily can I ask you the same question as well please? It's pretty much the same as Chi Chi's answer really because we're doing the same course but it's good because if you decide to do a HND or a degree, Siemens will just fund you through the whole thing and support you as well. And that, I mean, university is expensive. That's certainly one of the pros for our apprenticeship in that debate. Um, so Awkward Academy have sent in a question. Um, just before I go on to theirs as a, as a preface for it, where did you hear about the opportunities that you ultimately applied for and now are on to the apprenticeships that you do. Where did you first start looking for opportunities? Um, um, well, Emily first. Yeah, um, I found it because my mum kept sending me apprenticeships because she wanted me to apply to one, but I did fall in love with it anyway because it did say design engineering and that is what I wanted to do. But that's how I found out about mine. Um, Chi Chi, um, what about you? Yeah, for me, I well, for my high school and for my college, they um, let us know when um, events were going on uh, surrounding apprenticeships or to do with promoting apprenticeships. So I did go to some um, stands or pop ups that were there um, and that kind of helped me to know what kind of companies were out there. Funnily enough, Siemens wasn't one of them, um, but I found out about Siemens online at when looking on what on their website and also just keep 
keeping on looking at um, for different apprenticeship opportunities that popped up from them since I knew what kind of month in the year they normally started promoting them. Good advice. So um, to actually go to Awkward Academy's question, um, how easy or difficult was the process of applying and getting the apprenticeship? Um, Chi Chi, can we start with the application um, and your expectations of the application? Was it what you expected? Was it longer than you thought it would be? Was it paper based? Um, the application wasn't too much of a long process. I just sent over my CV and personal statement and heard back fairly quickly. Um, and it wasn't all um, just paper based. We also had um, an online kind of application. But it's something that they're trying out new and is new. It's it's more towards the way you think um, and to find out what kind of um, strengths you have as a person or skills. So it was actually in the form of a game and it, it, it's quite it was quite fun that as well. So it wasn't too uh, daunting or as daunted as I expected. And Emily, same to you. How easy or difficult did you find the process of applying? It was quite simple because I think I already had my CV written out anyway and my personal statement was just stuff that I enjoyed to do and it was just a bit about myself. Um, that like it was it wasn't really a test was it? It was, it was like a game. It was just to test your skills really. It was quite fun to be fair. Um, and then the interview that was quite it was like it was more like a conversation than an interview it was very friendly and also you got to remember that you're interviewing them as well because um, you've got to know that that's the right job for you and it's not all about them interviewing you that was going to be my follow-on question <laughs> was how was the interview but that's such a wonderful point because when you are applying for jobs just generally whether it's an apprenticeship or further on in your career when you're a bit older, um, you are trying to find an organisation that fits your personal wants and needs when it comes to a working environment. So that's really good advice. Um, Chi Chi, can I ask you about your interview? Um, you mentioned while she was speaking a slight touch of anxiety um, or perceived anxiety about being in employment. Did you feel that through the interview process? How did you offset any possible anxiety? Um, well, for me personally, I'm an overthinker. So just before a situation, I can feel really nervous until I'm in it. But to offset that, I did do some preparation. So sometimes, you know, some general questions that most interviews have. So, um, for example, why did you apply for the job? What interested you in it? Um, also, maybe some what interest do you have? And for me personally, um, researching that or having something in my mind um, before the interview that I wanted to say helped me to feel calm and then when it came to the actual interview itself um, having friendly people to talk to also helps you to feel calm so like Emily said it's not something to be too anxious about because they, they do keep it very simple they're just trying to find out a bit more about you and you're trying to find out a bit more about them and the company as well. Lovely advice and that is the same right across industry it's the interview process isn't meant to feel uncomfortable it is just finding out whether you are the best fit for a job um, so you both articulated that really well so someone has asked about GCSEs so again I'm going to preface this question with something else so it fits into a journey um, skills that you developed in school I'm sure it might they might not be clear comparisons to specific topics within subject areas, um, but advice that you'd give to your younger selves about developing skills that you started in school and now use as young adults. Um, Chi Chi, I've got to you first, I'm, I'm alternating. <laughs> um, I guess I'd say when it comes to time management, like I mentioned before, that's the skill I learned in high school. Um, I'm, I'm talking about um, skills that are not subject specific. Um, the idea of time management and um, taking ownership of your own work. 
and that's definitely something that you can use in the workplace because it does show your responsibility and it also helps the um the level of independence that you practice at work not to seem like too great a step if you practice taking ownership of your work now um obviously you still are supported by people in your team but it also helps you feel more capable of finding things out for yourself so i think in in terms of personal development and um, that was a clear skill um and i'd say also not worrying too much because for me i i started worrying about my jobs when I was in like year 10, year nine. But as I went on through the education process, um, it kind of seemed to clear, clearly show itself eventually. So not being too worried about it would be a piece of advice I'd give to my younger self. Wonderful. Emily? Um, I think a good skill is like being confident and not being afraid to ask for help because that's what your teachers are there for. They're there to help you and like, so are you, well, mentors at Siemens are there to help you. It's their job. So just don't be afraid to ask for help. If you even think it's something silly, just, don't, just ask. Cause it's Brilliant. Um, and just to add to both of them points, communication. We see it when we go into schools, the way young people communicate with the friends compared to the way they communicate with the teachers. It is very much translatable into um, the workplace. So to move on to the actual question, your GCSEs, um, what GCSEs grades did you have when you started your apprenticeship? Um, so I suppose for both of you, it was a stepping stone onto the next step before you started your apprenticeship. But GCSEs will be on the mind of young people that are joining from schools. Um, Emily, you first, please. Um, I wasn't the best at my GCSEs because um, I'm not a big fan of exams. Um, I think I got um, I think I got four in my Englishes, both my Englishes and then a five in maths. But I think that's why I took the step of going to a BTEC because it's mostly assignment based for when, when I went. I think they might do exams now, but it was mostly um, assignment based, which brings out most that I can do. Um, rather than doing exams in A-levels. And Chi Chi, same for you, um, your GCSEs. For me, if I remember correctly, I got a eight in English literature a seven in english language um i also got a seven in physics and that was quite surprising for me because um it was something it wasn't the easiest of subjects for me and it kind of motivated me to carry on um, with it into college um and for maths i got a seven as well um and then but when it came to other things like french <laughs> the, <laughs> um, that's when it started going down a, a bit downhill for me i got a six in that so i did have a range of different um grades but when it came to the i think i when it came to revising i did especially focus on um ones i knew i had an interest in taking on in college although i did try in all of them brilliant um and it, it is also just important to caveat that apprenticeships all apprenticeships will have different entry requirements um so just be particularly careful um, when you're reading application details um so another one is how do you manage your workloads and this will be um different now we are in a post pandemic era as they say with working at home so if I can double that question up with hybrid working and also managing your workload in that environment. Uh, Chi Chi first. Um, well, I think that just like when it comes to school, your teacher knows how much work they've given you and it's quite similar with work for us. For, um, our manager manages our projects, so she constantly asks um, how we're doing with our projects, if it's too much or too little and helps keep it at a good level since she's been in the industry a long time. So she knows how much work is needed for a particular type of project. So having that kind of um, bird's eye view on it helps um, me feel free to communicate 
and if I feel too stressed. That being said, I've not felt that way yet in my apprenticeship um, and I've been able to have a good amount of work to do in work and without having to take it at home during weekends or on days when I'm not supposed to be working. Um, and when it comes to college, um, a lot of the work that we do um, is enough for that day. Um, and when it comes to handling assignments that I get from college, um, some assignments our teachers will give us some a chance to do it within the lesson after the content or material has been teached, or I can space it out during my weekend. So I find that preparing in advance um, days when I'm going to work on my assignment help me not helps me to not feel too stressed in the future. Brilliant. Um, Emily, how how do you manage your workload, especially of hybrid working? Um, as Chi Chi said, our manager knows what our projects are. So um, she like gives them out lagged. So she'd give us one and then when we've got a bit of space in that project, she'd give us another so then we can start that one off. And um, I think I work from home two days a week, so Tuesdays and Fridays, and then I go to college on a Wednesday. So, but it is nice to come in the office because it's easier to ask people questions in the office because on Teams, you don't know what their workload's like either. So you feel a bit like, oh, do I call them or do I not? Yeah. Um, and then we don't have any more questions at the moment, but there is a few things I'd like to ask you if that's all right. Um, firstly, about annual leave. This will be a new concept or maybe a new concept to people that are watching, but you will get holiday entitlement as part of your job. Um, how do you manage that within your workload? Um, and was there the expectation when you did start your apprenticeship around accruing, building up your holiday entitlement? Emily? Um, do we say 28 days? 28 days, yeah. Um, but you can buy more if you want to. So how many does it go up to? Does it go up, up to, to five days. Yeah, you can buy up to five days. Um, but you have before you take a holiday it depends how long it is because if it's just a day then it's not that bad but if it's like a week or two weeks then you've got to send a handover meeting you've got to send a handover email and or do a meeting either one um to your project managers to make sure they know what how your project's up to so um they know everything that's going to happen in the next two weeks so nothing goes behind or anything and sometimes even the engineers that are still working might um help you with your drawings or anything just to make sure that everything's on track for the end scheduled date and chi chi um the yeah. experience of managing your workload before going on on annual leave or holiday how has that been for you i found that um Sometimes you may feel, I, uh, initially I might have felt like, oh, well, when I go, when I, will I come back to masses and masses of work? But um, when it comes to it, sometimes picking the right time to take um, a holiday is quite important when it comes to projects that have just begun. But when they go to the middle phase or nearer to the end phase, sometimes you can see you come back and not a lot has changed. Um, and it also when you're picking up a project, it's normally the first two weeks that are the busiest. And after that, you can take holidays as you like, depending on how long they are, of course. And when it comes to um, managing taking holidays itself, um, I think initially compared to high school and college, you have set holidays. So at first I was thinking to myself, is this too little? How am I going <laughs> to feel refreshed with only some like with a specific number of days? But you actually get into a good routine and sometimes you even have holidays left over and you only realize it near the end of the year and it feels nice to have a random day as a treat for yourself sometimes. Brilliant. Um, we, we've not had any more questions come through, so this is going to be the last question I'll ask you before we finish. Um, but how long have you got left on your apprenticeships and do you have any ideas of what's next for you both? Chi Chi, I keep forgetting who to ask. <laughs> um, so our apprenticeship is a 
three year apprenticeship. So um, we'll be finishing next year. Um, and when it comes to next steps, I've not made a concrete decision just yet because on our last year, um, will have an opportunity to go into the tendering field for six months and also the project management field. So then at the end of our apprenticeships, we'll have a choice between becoming a design engineer, a project manager or a tendering engineer. So since I'm not experienced still still yet, I'm still um, waiting to have a try of them, but I, I am quite excited to um, to pick one. Um. And that's one of the beauties of apprenticeships is you do get to experience different areas of business or the organisation and you've got plenty of time yet. How about you, Emily? Um, have you got the same amount of time left? Yeah, the same amount of time. Um, one of our other apprentices are currently in project management at the moment and he's really enjoying it. So I am really looking forward to trying out different parts of the company. Brilliant. Um, I think that's it. We have linked um, where you can find opportunities for apprenticeships at Siemens in the chat. Um, so please do have um, have a nosy at that. Um, I'd like to thank Emily and Chi Chi for sharing their stories and insights this morning. I think it's wonderful to hear about recent lived experience. Um, and then thank you to everyone that has joined. We've hoped that you found the session useful. You can keep up to date with anything Meet Your Future at GMAX and the link um, is in the Q&A box. Um, GMAX is our Greater Manchester and Apprenticeship and Career Service platform where you can find out lots more information about careers, apprenticeships and opportunities open to you. Many of you will all be already be aware of what GMAX is and how to get on it but if you're not then please speak to your teacher or careers leader in school and they'll be able to sign post you. You'll see a QR code for feedback on your screen now. We would love for you to submit feedback um, if you cannot do this at this exact moment in time um, then we will be cir circulating feedback forms out to teachers after the event. Feedback is really important for us to continue to develop and improve our Meet Your Future sessions. So if you do get a minute, then please do complete it. Um, thank you for joining. We hope that you have a fantastic rest of the day and National Apprenticeship Week. That's it from us. Thank you. Thanks.